Y'all thought I was done talking? Seriously? Oops. So guess what? I have more to say. I didn't want to bore you guys with an hour long video, so here's part two. So I got these road train isograph technical pens. I have never heard of technical pens before taking this course. Like Wow, look at that. In all my years of being an artist, there was this one tool that I have never, ever heard of before. So it comes with this really handy case and the cover is actually a ruler slash protector slash stencil and everything else you could think of. So it's really useful. So this set comes with the point 0.2, point 0.4, and point 0.6 pens. And it also comes with a regular mechanical pencil. The, the regular sized ones, the ones you don't have to sharpen. <laughs> yeah. It also comes with a cartridge for the mechanical pens and an eraser, the ink for the pens, and a head change for a compass. It's really nice. Let's look at these pens. So essentially, technical pens are what most people nowadays call fine liners but they're not the regular uh, felt tip fine liners the reusable ones that I'm more used to well this is a really small needle look at that it's so small it's so precise wow So these guys are like the more traditional versions of those felt tip fine liners that I'm quite used to. So this is where you place the ink and this is the needle. Oh by the way, I love that everything is a screw cap, like this body is obviously a screw cap. But also the cover is a screw cap because the needles in these things, especially the smaller points, are really fragile. So you know that it won't get damaged easily if like you put it in a bag and it, and you're sure that it won't just randomly open and the needle is gonna break inside your bag. So, that's really nice. Okay, let's get to linking. And they say you have to shake it like a few times to just let the ink flow. Aside from the road train, I also got these Isomars Techno Art Technical Drawing Pens. Um, they're significantly cheaper. I just got them for practice, but let's see. Okay, so first of all, I actually like their packaging a lot more. It feels safer and more compact, more solid. But they don't have the anti-slip rubbers in the back. 
unlike roaching does so you get one thing you can't get the other you can never win both oh and they also have these really cool pen stands I guess this is for putting them there and so you don't have to constantly twist open the cap every time you want to use them and switch to a different size so I guess that's really useful they also come with their compass heads and free ink so basically they have the same structure as the road trim ones the twist cap and the body the cartridge they're all the same so they work the same as well so I think Isomars is really just a cheap knockoff of, <laughs> of roaching. Plus the color is also the same. I mean, look at that. It's the same brownish maroon type. So the real question is which of them works best? Okay, so comparison time. So I have here the Rotring Point 2 pen and the Isomars Point 2 pen. So look at them, they look so identical. Like you wouldn't be able to tell them apart if you weren't looking at the brand and if this red thing wasn't here. So they look really, really similar. Even the even the design on the needle labels, look at that. They look so similar. So yeah, cheap knockoffs. Wow. So first, let's try the rotring ones. And just try them here, make a few lines. Feels really smooth, works really well. Next, let's try the Isomars one. Oh. Okay. Okay. So you. It works only at a certain angle. Like if you. Right? This way, you can hear the friction between the paper and the pen. So, that's already a huge difference. Plus, the Rotring writes way smoother. You can hear the texture of the paper with the lines I'm making. Plus, yeah. The ink is very inconsistent. This is full, the cartridge is full, but yeah. Okay. I didn't do the same amount of lines with the rope drink, so let's see. Okay, so it also doesn't. Oh, never mind. It works with that angle, just needed getting used to. But it's also not as consistent when you have it at this angle. The, the best angle to write with technical pens would really be this way. But you could hear that the friction is just different, you know? This is just the sound of the needle scraping through the paper. Unlike, unlike with the Isomars one, it, it really felt like it was having a lot of trouble with the writing on the paper. So yeah. Rotring is undeniably more fluid. It's the, it's the real deal, so yeah. Rotring is really, really good. But for cheap knockoffs, I, I don't think 
as Mars is half bad. Plus with the ink, I don't really think there's much difference. Like, look at that. I even think the Eyes of Mars ink is a lot darker and more vivid than these ones. But with when it comes to fluidity, Roaching still wins. But if you're just interested with practice, when you're not thinking of actually using it full time, I think the Eyes of Mars isn't a bad option. Okay, so next I want to compare them to some regular fine liners and pens that I have lying around. So first, let's try this Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in XS. They don't really say that it's 0.2, they don't say the points of, of any of their pens, but I've, I think, since this is the smallest one, I think it's a fairly good comparison, so. The line is definitely accurate. I don't know, maybe it's just because that I'm used to fine liners that it feels a whole lot more fluid in my hands. Look at that, even my lines are way straighter. I don't even have to think of writing these lines. But when it comes to ink though, look at that. You can easily see that the fine liner inks are a bit faded compared to the technical pen inks. Next, there's this other fine liner brand that I really like. It's Unipin Fine Line. Sadly, I don't have the 0.2. I only have 0.3 lying around, but let's just see for comparison's sake. Actually, that doesn't look like it's 0.3 though. Oh, if, yeah, if you put more pressure. See, this is what I'm talking about. If you put more pressure, it the line becomes thicker, and if you put less pressure, it almost looks like it's 0.2. Look at that. Yeah. And the ink isn't as glossy and as vivid as you would get from technical pens. There you have it, but I would still prefer <laughs> fine liners. So, next, let's try this Pilot G Deck pen. This is in 0.4. I don't think they have anything thinner than this, but let's just try for comparison. Okay, it's definitely thicker. I'm even putting really minimal pressure on this. And the pressure doesn't vary with how much you write. I don't know. I think it's because it's also a metal tip, but it's definitely not a technical pen. Look at that. The ink though, the ink doesn't look too different from technical pen inks, but I don't know, there's just something wrong about using a GTEC for drafts and plates. I don't know. It's just, it's just good for writing. Don't. So, next we have this Uniball. Um, what do you call this? Whatever. <laughs> My mind blanked. So yeah, let's just try it for fun. Yeah, that is really thick, but the ink, the ink looks good, but it dries significantly slower. You can see that it's still wet over there. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know why I put this in with the comparison. Anyway, I mean, don't use this. So, yeah. If I were to rank them, I would put... Roaching first, of course, then Eyes of Mars, and then I'm kind of conflicted between the two of these, honestly, because when in terms of Roaching duplicates, I think the Fabric Castell pen wins both in ink quality and in size accuracy, because 
This one is really, really inconsistent. Sometimes it looks like it's 0.2, sometimes it looks like it's 0.4, and you can't really tell. So, in terms of duplicates, I would put this for a solid third. But, in terms of fluidity and how much I just like the pen, this one would ultimately be. It would be here. No. It would be here. <laughs> but, yeah, it's not a good plate duplicate. So, bye bye. The next thing I'm going to be showing you guys is the double-sided eraser. One side, as we all know, is a pencil eraser. And the other side, the blue side, as Legend Bartels, can erase ink. But do they really work? So... I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen that work in real life. Ever. I've only seen videos about it, but I'm not even entirely sure that those are real. So, let's see. Let's try it. I really don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> but I don't know. Okay, it's not working. So that's that's the G Tech pen, I think. Let's try it. Yep, nope, nothing's happening. Nope. 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 Nothing is happening. This is a scam. This is a scam. It does not, it does not erase ink, guys. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Last but not the least, of course, I need a bag to carry all of these because my back already aches from carrying this conversation. <laughs> I feel like such a legit artist with this bag. Like, it's, I think it's A2. Yeah, it's A2. More than A2 because it fits my A2 cutting mat and there's still a ton of space. So. Yeah, so this has everything that I need for college for the first semester. Since we never know. But yeah, right now, um, it fits everything. Really snug and tight. And there's even a buckle inside of it where you can fasten papers and cutting mat so it doesn't get all messed up inside. And there's also pockets. And there's this really cool pocket up here for brushes. I don't know if it's for brushes, but that's where I put my brushes because it's plastic, so you don't have to worry about your brushes still being wet from cleaning afterwards. So yeah, I think it's a really nice installment to have. And since I'm using fairly small brushes for the semester, so I think it's really useful. And it also has my beloved graphite pencil that I don't want to damage, so yeah. Yeah, it fits everything. Oh, and it also fits the T-square, but not entirely. Like, you can put it up in some part of it, like this part, would jet out. But it's not much of a problem. I mean, you're already carrying a huge, huge bag anyway, so. This is nothing. I mean, it's fine. Okay, so my final conclusions are, first of all, the 2mm mechanical pencil, it just doesn't work. No. For me, the entire point of having a mechanical pencil is that you don't have to sharpen it anymore because it's mechanical, okay? Like you just have to, if it breaks, click, click, you have a new set. And if the lead runs out, just refill it, click, click, there you have it. But with the mechanical pen, you have to click 
And every once in a while, you have to sharpen it. What is the point? I mean, I'm not dissing on the brand and the pen itself because it's really good. Okay, the quality is on point. I love it. It's so professional. It, the, the feel of it in your hand is amazing. Okay, but the 2mm, I would, I would buy the Rotring 0.5. Okay. They had a 0.5 with the same quality. I would get it, but 2mm is just it's like a regular pencil that you have to sharpen every now and then, and it's so annoying and frustrating. Like, what is the point of getting a mechanical pencil that you still have to manually sharpen? Technical pens versus regular fine liners. I would I would go with <laughs> the regular fine liners for a number of reasons. First of all, it's because of the price. Okay. One time use felt tip fine liners are way cheaper <laughs> than reusable. But then again, reusable ones help the environment, blah blah blah, save the turtles and such. But it's too pricey. So you know, if you're not, if not, if it's not required for you, regular fine liners, felt tip fine liners would do fine. Although it's really advantageous that the metal needles don't wear out over time unless you break them of course but no matter how much pressure you put on them the thickness of the line doesn't vary because it's metal it's non-malleable as compared to the felt tips which even if you don't use a lot just the pressure you put on the pen onto the paper the line weights will vary. Even if it says 0.2, if you add a little more pressure on it, it get it gets thicker. So yeah, that's one of the disadvantages of felt tip fine liners. But I don't know, for me, I'm I'm just so used to having control over felt tip fine liners with inks that dry really fast. So for me, I'm more comfortable with the felt tip fine liners, but I can't deny that the quality of the ink itself, not the drying, the ink itself and the pen is better with technical pens. Even with just the Isomars brand, not, not even Rotring, you can see that the quality is so much better but when it comes to flexibility of the use I would still choose felt tip fine liners but that's just me I don't know about you and I'm still starting with technical pens so maybe I'll get used to them sometime and maybe I'll like them more but right now felt tip for the win <laughs> and lastly the eraser was kind of a disappointment. The, the ink eraser. This is one of those disappointed but not surprised moments. You know what I mean? Like, I'm disappointed that it doesn't work. But then again, I also expected it to not work. But I also would have wanted it to work. You know, like... So that's it for my first vlog, I think. I don't know if you guys made it this far. Thank you. <laughs> if not, if you skip through some corny parts or skip through the entire thing, I don't know. You s don't judge me. <laughs> but I enjoyed it, really. So, yeah. Hit like, comment, and subscribe, and whatever, and check out my other videos where I don't talk, and just, yeah. Bye!
still going guys.